Hey guys, uh, welcome to the webinar today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we are going to be talking about the fundamentals of the trailer music business. Um, I'm Emma Griffiths from Think Tank. I handle all of our marketing and also our popular blog, thinkblog.com. And I'm delighted to be joined by Emily Weber, who is VP of Creative Licensing and Trailers and Promo at Position Music. Hey, Emily. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for uh, listening in. Yeah, this is very cool. So as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be kind of going through some of the basics, some of the best practices of finding these opportunities, pitching for them, and all that good stuff. Um, I've tried to um, factor in any questions that I've received in advance already into the presentation, but if you have any burning questions that you're dying to ask Emily, then do take a look at the little questions section in the control panel of the GoToWebinar, which is on the right-hand side, and you can go ahead and type in any questions you might have, and hopefully if we have time later, we can get to those and answer anything. Um, and then you also don't have to worry about like writing down notes or recording anything because this is all being recorded and everybody will be sent the slides. So we are all good on that front. So just kind of sit back and take it all in. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd start with a little intro to Emily. We're super excited to have her as a guest today because as you can see from this little bio, she's had a huge background in uh, trailer music. So Emily, I don't know if you want to kick off by just giving us a little intro to what you do. Uh, sure. I um, Well, originally I was a, a musician and composer myself years and years ago. Um, and then I eventually got a little older and started working in music publishing and sync licensing. Started off in film and television in 2003-ish, 2004. Um, and then I kind of slowly segued into trailers. Uh, it's sort of a long story, so I won't go into it, but <laughs> fast forward to today. Um, I've been working at Position Music for over eight years now. I was at Immediate Music before that, and I was at Riptide Music before that. <laughs> um, and I've been working with uh, trailer houses and music supervisors for trailers and the studios for quite some time. I've also been uh, what we call a and ring <laughs> many of our albums here at Position Music and working with uh, our, our stellar roster of composers and, and bands as well. Um, and it's just been a really incredible experience. I, uh, I, I know that I'm, I'm, uh, I have a pretty good ear for this stuff. I don't know why or how that happened, but <laughs> um, my clients trust me for my opinion on music and it's definitely been a really fun fun time to do it and it's it's getting even more exciting now and we're growing and so i'm i'm looking forward to the next uh phase of trends that are going to happen in music for trailers amazing yeah i mean when we were looking to put this webinar together you guys were definitely like the go-to of who we wanted to speak to <laughs> um, i'm very pleased Thank you're joining us. <laughs> a little bit of history on position i mean you cover a little bit but um they are actually quite a long-term uh, client of Think Tank. We've been working with these guys for ages. We love working with them. They've always got some really cool, exciting projects on the go. Um, they were founded in 99 uh, by Tyler Bacon. They're an indie music publisher and label. And the most exciting thing, you know, in terms of this webinar is they're very focused on sync licensing. And as you can see in the little bio here, they're very also focused on um, the trailer side as well, which obviously we are talking about today. Um, yeah, and you guys, you know, you represent and work with some amazing composers, particularly on the trailer side, like uh, Joseph Trapanese, Adam Peters, James Dooley, Jack Trammell, Danny Cook. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone yeah. to add in there. We, yeah, we also work with um, the artist called Zvi, uh, which is Christian Borlander and Simon Heger. We work with Joe Blankenberg, um, working with um, uh, a, a, a artist called Kings and Creatures. They're based in the UK. We love them. Um, and then on our commercial artist side, we work with uh, many great bands as well. We work with Welshley Arms mm -hmm. um, and with Tyrone Wells, all kinds of great artists. So um, 
there's a lot of opportunity in trailers for not only composers and library music, but also for commercial music and songs, indie and major, as I'm sure you've heard when you're watching trailers. <laughs> Very cool. So, yeah. And if that you, went off tangent. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, head over to positionmusic.com. I've put the link in there um, because you can check out the roster and you can check out some of their placements, which I've linked to on this slide. But we'll click it. We'll check over that because we can't play anything on here, sadly, because the bandwidth is just too complicated and it'll get all get all um, weird. So <laughs> I'll leave you quick yeah. that out another time. Um, little quick blurb about Think Tank. Um, we are a cloud-based licensing software platform um, that enables you to manage and monetize your digital music assets. Uh, we have clients including BT, Disney, Fox, Peer Music, uh, Red Bull, Sony, Vice, of course, Position as well. Uh, we, work we love working with Think Tank. Yeah, you guys are great. Um handling all of our, our audio assets and the delivery for music to our clients with Sync Tank is fantastic. So I have nothing but great things to say about you guys. <laughs> oh, amazing, yeah. I mean, we work with kind of companies of all sizes. We're, we're very able to tailor things to your own kind of bespoke needs and just help you manage and monetize your music more effectively. So if anyone wants to get in touch, please feel free to just drop us an email at inquiries at syncTank.net and you'll see um, the link to our site at the bottom, synctank.com, and it's the same for all our socials. And as I mentioned earlier, I manage the blog, which is syncblog.com, but there will be links to that later on. So that is all good. Okay, so I'm sure everybody who's joined this webinar is already aware that trailer music is a huge thing, because that's why you're here. Um, I thought I would just put it into context a little bit. You know, it's been a booming business over the last few years. More people in watching trailers on more platforms than ever before. And Emily and I were actually just talking about um, a really cool example of one of the position artists who I'm going to leave you to pronounce that because <laughs> I'm going to ask out of that. Zwei. <laughs> I can't pronounce it very well either. It's German. <laughs> okay. uh, they replaced the Z with a number two because they are two dudes from Hamburg. Um, again, they're their names are Christian Vorlander and Simon Heger, and uh, they are two German guys, Zwei, which is German for two. <laughs> and uh, I apologize for you people who speak German well who are listening right now. I'm t I know I'm pronouncing that terribly. <laughs> um, yeah, they are uh, very talented composers, and uh, they have made a lot of original music for us, but they've also done some cover songs. One of those cover songs was the song Survivor, originally done by Destiny's Child back in the 90s. If you guys remember, maybe you were too young to remember that. <laughs> um, and it was placed in the trailer for Tomb Raider, in, in the second trailer. The, you, as you guys probably know, there are multiple trailers cut for a campaign. Um, often it's a teaser trailer first, and then maybe a main trailer that's going to be um, in theaters before uh, another big franchise movie. And then sometimes they'll do trailer number two, trailer three. They'll do various cut downs. They'll do TV spots. You know the drill. Um, so this one was particularly for t uh, the second trailer. It was a really fun one to work work on. And what was just really exciting about it is that. Uh, the song really connected with fans and um, everyone really enjoyed listening to it, hearing it to the point where um, Zvi was receiving like um, little videos and Instagram links and of, of people all over the world dancing <laughs> to the song <laughs> from, from like a little kid dancing in the living room all the way to like professional dance troops with full on beautiful choreography. They get dozens and dozens of these videos submitted to them every day. And, and uh, if you go to their Facebook page, actually, they've posted a, a beautiful compilation of the dance videos that they received. But uh, the point is, is that this is a song that was just used in a trailer. It wasn't really um, promoted in any way other than that. But uh, if you go to their Spotify page, the song has had over 6 million streams on Spotify. And it's had over 28 million streams on YouTube, which is incredible. 
if, especially if you're an artist trying to uh, reach a new fan base, a placement in a trailer like that could do it. And, and it did for this song. It's really put Zvi on the map. And um, so it was really exciting for them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a, a really, a really uh, nice, uh, you know, bonus, I guess, for a trailer placement. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's pretty great. So, yeah. For sure. <laughs> As I put here, you know, all of this content and all of these new trailers that are out there and all these different versions of trailers, they all need music and music and sound is a really important element in most trailers. So it's a huge opportunity for music rights holders and composers. And there's also, you know, a wide range of music being used as well. It's not just your epic orchestral compositions, you know, there's there's really a wide range um, out there that's being used. So again, Lots of opportunities uh, in the trailer music world. Yeah. So I thought we would just quickly run through the types of trailers. You touched on a few there because it can get a bit confusing with all the teasers and the promos and the number two and number three. So um... <laughs> it can. It, it confuses me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even always know. <laughs> yeah, you go on YouTube sometimes and there's a trailer for the trailer and you're like, uh-huh, okay. Yeah, there yeah. is. <laughs> Anything we can do to, yeah. for advertising. Exactly. I mean, obviously. Obviously, the way that we advertise nowadays has changed so much in the last 10 years, 20 years, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, reaching, um, reaching fans is more challenging and all of that gets done through basically the internet now. Mm -hmm. um, so just going to the movies and seeing the trailer before the movie, that's great, but it isn't enough. They got to reach you in many different ways. So mm -hmm. there are so many different types of, of trailers. There's the little tiny 10 second things you see when you're scrolling through your Instagram or your Facebook page. And yeah, like you said, there's often a little trailer before the trailer. <laughs> um, sometimes there's even a commercial for something else before you watch the trailer, you know, on YouTube. It's definitely, um, it's definitely pretty daunting. Um, I don't even always know uh, what kinds of trailers are out there. It's, it's, it's difficult for me to navigate. I'm still learning every day what kinds of trailers are, are coming out, especially for the digital world. It's uh, maybe because I'm an old lady and I'm still trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out what the kids are watching these days. Um, but um, yeah, for film and TV, obviously the, um, the uh, growth of streaming services has been really huge. There's, um, uh, well, I think Disney's gonna be launching their streaming service. Uh, CBS has uh, all access. CBS is a, a network here in the U.S. for those of your, you international folks listening. Um, so there's HBO streaming services called HBO Now. There's Netflix. There's Hulu. Hulu is another U.S. based one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, God, it, it goes on and on. And uh, the content is just incredible. We're really in the golden age of television right now. Obviously, all these shows that are coming out and they don't come out one week at a time like they used to they they come out all at once boom you know um any show on netflix there's there it is your eight episodes and 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 these are some really huge budget um projects so obviously the marketing is going to be pretty huge as well and and there's a lot of it there's a lot of content so um so i guess it, it is a gray area do you call that a movie trailer or do you call it a tv show promo um, it's it's a little vague, and um, a lot of the movie trailer houses that are hired to create the trailer content for a big movie are also being hired by Netflix and Hulu and HBO to create really beautiful theatrical level trailers for their TV shows. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely hard to define what what's what. Um, it, at the end of the day, they're little miniature two and a half minute films to get you excited about the show or the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, video game trailers are also uh, uh, in the same way. They're, they are um, interesting because you're advertising a product, but, but video games are, are also cinematic and, and like a movie. So the, the trailers are also kind of the same way. And for the same comment that I said about film and TV, the same movie trailer houses are cutting these video game spots as well. So um, that is that is the second one. And then your, your third one, trailer formats, theatrical online. Again, um, I think this just sort of uh, melds right in with the film and TV. Um, yeah. You know, uh, 
I think it's all just sort of the same. <laughs> it's all going to be on the internet. Um, obviously going to be shown in theaters. I think they're showing trailers now on digital billboards. Uh, I mean, everywhere you go, everywhere you look, you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah, I hope that, I hope that answers. <laughs> <laughs> just everywhere, basically. Everywhere you go, you're going to get slapped in the face. With trailers. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I actually thought about doing a trailer for this webinar, and then I was like, no, that's probably a statue. <laughs> No. Actually, as a joke, I, I make a trailer every year for my Christmas card for my family. <laughs> it's really silly. Tell me that this year. That sounds great. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so kind of moving on to the, the process and the key people involved, because I know that um, with trailers, it's kind of bizarre. I think people assume that the music supervisor who is going to work on the film or the school composer who's going to work on the film is probably going to be involved in the trailer. But you guys just get involved so much earlier than that that that's just not the case that is true it is a, a common myth that the uh film composer scoring the film also is going to have the same music in the trailer mm -hmm. that is uh definitely not true for a variety of reasons the, the main reason being what you described in that the trailers are often being um produced way before the film is finished so mm -hmm. there isn't music for the film yet when they're making the trailer the second reason is that the music for the trailer has to be really exciting and um, kind of in your face, you know, because uh, they wa want you to watch the trailer and they want you to come see the film. Where the music in the film is more of a supportive role, it's written to uh, the scene, trying to create an emotion. Mm -hmm. So that the music style is just very different in, in many cases as well. Um, and then the third reason I think is just that the, uh, the movie studio uh creating the film has a whole separate department creating the marketing for the film two different departments two different teams of people different producers different directors so because there's this, there is a strategy involved in how to market a film so they're not going to necessarily um put that on the film producers yeah. um you're going to you know when you're making a film or if you're making a song or if you're making a piece of art you're not necessarily going to promote it yourself you're going to hire someone to help you promote it because uh that's maybe their forte so that's how the movie studios work as well there's just a whole separate department that does that that's their their bread and butter or not bread and butter sorry that's their um that's their forte that's what they're good at <laughs> and so you um, are mainly working with the trailer houses is that correct yeah, oh, sorry about that. That was off off topic there. <laughs> the movie studios hire the tra we call them trailer houses. They're they're basically like ad agencies. The studios hire them to create the content. Um, some studios have in house teams that do it as well. But um, you know they 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 sort of work like any um, ad agency in the advertising world. They're uh, competing to uh, create the best piece of work so that the client can pick what they like to use and um, so yeah I work I work with the trailer houses mostly mm -hmm. um, occasionally I might work with the studio but mostly the studio is trusting the, the agencies to to do everything the trailer houses have music departments uh, not all of them do but most most of them do and so the music supervisors who work at those trailer houses will come to me for music and that that would be probably the main people I'm involved with mm -hmm. um so yeah <laughs> that's where sort of the creative direction comes from and then you just kind of get back to them on their brief yeah the creative direction is it varies sometimes it's really early stages where they'll they kind of just got the film in and they haven't watched it yet but they're starting to talk to me about ideas of what they'd like or sometimes they are they know exactly what they want and they're about to cut and they'll come to me with that or sometimes they um, don't know what they want and they need ideas and they're gonna throw some pasta at the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> sometimes they cut the trailer and they, they've got the music in and everything's great, but then something happens with the music. They decide they don't wanna use it for a variety of reasons. It might be a creative reason or it might be that they can't afford it or, uh, or the artist isn't approving it. And then they'll come to me for panic attack mode we need to replace this song um so that can happen as well at the last minute sometimes um, yeah um and i see your question of the what typically are they looking for uh bespoke versus existing um 
you know, years ago it was usually always uh, existing. It bespoke was pretty uncommon, but that has shifted. Um, custom music is now a lot more normal, probably, um, probably like, I don't know, 50% of it for, for us in our world. I've, I've had, I've been on panels before with some trailer houses where they say it's like 80 or 90% bespoke at their trailer houses, but I find that that isn't really happening so much here at Position Music. That might be because we also have a, a catalog of of commercial artists as well, and so my my clients know that, and they are coming to us for existing songs. Mm -hmm. um, but I would definitely say there's been a huge increase in custom music, um, definitely. Um, and are you including I mean, stuff like remixes and um, sort of trailerizing of certain tracks in that, or is that? Good? Yeah, he, yeah, definitely a huge increase in in um trailerizations of of commercial songs or covers of well-known songs mm. um yeah for sure I, I think you know years ago when trailer houses wanted to use a big commercial song they always were not able to because it didn't creatively work in their cut but then it, it became a little more normal to hire a company like us to create what's called an overlay which is basically a custom piece of music a kind of gets overlaid on top of the commercial song to give it a little beef, you know, sometimes it's just a, a drum or percussion overlay, or sometimes it's maybe some orchestral lines on a rock song, just to give it that oomph, you know? Um, and so now that that, I think they've discovered that this can be done and it works, that's become more normal and that's given, um, that's given trailer houses a lot more options and it has given labels and publishers even more increase in uses of their there are songs that wouldn't normally have been used maybe 10 years ago, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. And I guess we've been through some of the workflows. I mean, but what is the typical time frame with a trailer? I mean, is it is it a horrible last minute thing or do you actually get some time? It really varies. Uh, sometimes there's lots of time. Uh, sometimes for a custom job, they'll give us a week or two weeks. Other times it's, we need it tonight <laughs> or tomorrow <laughs> because it's a, yeah, a, fire alarm. <laughs> um, so the workflows and timeframes are definitely all over the place, but I would say most of the time it's it's pretty quick turnaround. Uh, a normal average turnaround time, I think, for a custom is two days. Okay. And uh, and that's that's pretty doable for, for most the most part, depending on how many revisions they need to, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. And um, talking about budgets, I mean, how, how are you seeing those um at the moment are they are they sort of staying roughly the same are they going down i mean what are you noticing um i've noticed that uh for some clients it's gone down and then for other clients it's actually gone up um i i would say when there's a really huge franchise movie like a like a dc comics or a you know usually it's a superhero movie or something mm -hmm. they they uh money sometimes is no object they want to pay for a really huge song that everybody knows have it customized and go big with it so uh, that comes across sometimes and then other times it's a smaller um film or maybe maybe it is a big film but they just don't want to spend the money uh so the budgets are kind of all over the place we run into um you know all kinds of of scenarios i, I can't really pinpoint any particular type of budget range but Overall, some budgets have increased and some budgets have decreased, <laughs> I guess, if that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Um, and in terms of, you know, when you're negotiating deals for your artists and your composers, what are the variables that are sort of banded about that change, you know, the size of the fee and, and how much, you know, typically can you expect to earn? Well, you know, everything depends also on the media buys. So if it's a... And we, we, we kind of do our quotes on, based on timing as well. I mean, if a trailer is two and a half minutes long and they're using a song for two and a half minutes, we're going to charge more. That's your whole trailer. And, and you know, sometimes a song, most of the time a song has a shelf life of only one use. If that song is being used for an entire trailer, it's not going to be used again because uh, it's associated now with that brand. So we're going to have to charge a little more on that um but if it's a little song that they're kind of maybe just using it in for 10 seconds in the intro and it's not really a big deal we'll charge less and 
if it's an all media worldwide campaign, we're going to charge more. Or if it's just a TV spot, spot that's running in the US for a, a couple months, you know, we'll charge less. Mm -hmm. So you can negotiate all of those things and, and all of those terms. Yeah. And can can we mention any fee ballparks or is that something? Uh, I mean, I can, but it's it's not it's hard to pinpoint. It can be as low as a thousand dollars and as high as hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It just depends on what it is. So, mm -hmm. um, you and know, like there's so many different types of things. I'm sorry. Sorry, I was going to say it also depends on, I guess, if it is bespoke or if it's an existing composition. Yeah, it also depends if it's a library queue or a sound design queue or a commercial artist track. Mm -hmm. So yeah, lots of variables involved. And we yeah. touched on this a little bit before, but um, I'm guessing that you know these all these on-demand platforms they've just brought so many more opportunities to the table. For sure, there's a huge. Uh, I'm excited about it. It's like I think they said Netflix has like something like 180. I, I'm just probably making that number up. I don't know. I read it somewhere, but like, let's just say lots and lots and lots of movies and TV shows coming this year for Netflix, which means lots and lots of trailers. So huge opportunity there. You know, all those trailers are going to need some music. So I'm, I'm loving it. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now I know we, um, we talked about this before. Video games isn't necessarily your speciality, but as I said before, you're, you're certainly going to know probably more than anybody else tuning into this <laughs> webinar. Uh, I may or may not. Yeah, admittedly, my coworker is the one who deals with our video game trailers, although I do sometimes get involved a little bit because of what I said earlier in that a lot of my clients at the movie trailer houses are also cutting video game spots for some of their clients. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, main people involved for me are just probably the same people I work with for the movie trailer houses. Mm -hmm. um, the bespoke composition versus existing composition, I admit, I, I actually don't know. I think it's probably similar to movie trailer where there's a little bit of both, but I, I don't know the exact numbers. Mm. Um, workflows and timeframes, I also am not sure. I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is, yeah. These are questions for my coworker. Yeah. <laughs> um, the I'll budget, though, I, 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 I can answer. Oh, sorry? Sorry, I was just going to say, I'll, I'll have to do an interview with him another time, and then we'll... Yeah, just I will say, though, that the budgets for video games are usually a little smaller than they are for films, which kind of boggles my mind, because the video game industry makes <laughs> so much money. I'm like, what? But also, um, the uh, the rights they need are usually um, less. They don't need all media worldwide. They usually uh, need what's called the basic four rights. Um, basic four is... Um, I think it's, uh, what's it? sorry, uh, trade shows and conferences, which is one, uh, internet, which is two, um, uh, demo disc free giveaway, which is three, mm -hmm. and in store, which is four. So those are the four rights. And so, um, and that's usually for worldwide. Mm -hmm. So I think when, those are pretty limited rights. So I think the budgets are going to just be a little less for music when that's all they need. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, and then you've got these new platforms, um, you know, like Twitch, and then this huge new sector, esports. How have you seen yeah, the, that kind of esports thing? Is crazy, and my coworker is all about it. So yeah, you'll you'll have to do a whole separate video games interview with him. He'll go on about it for an hour. He's amazing <laughs> with this stuff. <laughs> we heard it here, guys. We're gonna do a follow up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing. Okay, cool. Um, now I know this was the bit that you know you're super passionate about because at Position you guys are all about finding the talent and working with your artists and really nurturing them and I just really wanted to you know talk to you about how it is that you guys do that you know what do you look for in these composers and these artists um, so yeah anything that you can kind of yeah. do there would be amazing. Yeah this is my favorite uh, thing to talk about absolutely mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, we don't exist without amazing music. We have to have incredible music. And um, and we, yeah, how do you find incredible music? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because there's so many people out there and there's so many people who write music, so many people who perform music. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and you wanna, you wanna find the best. And sometimes you do have to kind of, uh, you know, find that needle in the haystack. There's, um, I guess I'll start with um, your first topic of finding mm -hmm. and developing talent. 
finding is is definitely um, a challenge. I, I admit I do these webinars and panels a lot simply so that I, I'm hoping people are listening. So all of you out there who are listening, you guys are composers maybe, maybe you're artists. We want to hear your music. So, I mean, that's why I'm here. I want you to email us. <laughs> I want to hear it all. Um, my, we have an A&R team here of, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, we got six people, seven people wow. on our A&R team. Yeah. They are constantly scouring the internet um, and they're always out going to shows. They're just looking, looking, looking. And, and a lot of it's word of mouth too, you know, oh, I know this guy, he's a composer over here. And, you know, you know, a lot of really great composers don't always know how to promote themselves. And um, so how do you find them? You know, it's definitely a lot of word of mouth and a lot of just uh, scouring the internet. And um, we also want, our composers to be very happy here, which I think they are. <laughs> I know they are. And because of that, they know people, they know composers, or they might know, have composer assistants looking. And so they also spread the word for, mm -hmm. for us, which is really fantastic. So um, that would be how we find them, I guess. And, and then again, I do these, these uh, webinars in hopes that people will hear, hear us speak and hear me speak and you know want to submit their music. So. Um, your second point, developing and nurturing talent. That's a big one too, because there, there are a lot of companies out there that maybe don't have time, which yeah. I totally understand, to develop and nurture talent. Like they might get a submission from an artist and, and hear the potential, but it's not quite there, so they don't want to work with them until you are there. And, and that can happen here too sometimes because you know we're all very, very, very busy and it's like how much bandwidth do we have to nurture talent? But I would say for the most part, we, we do try to develop and nurture talent, and we have. Um, even some of our biggest trailer composers who are killing it right now, when you know, we first started working with them, we saw the potential, they were not quite there yet, and then we just worked with them and got them there you know, and helped them. So um, we're happy to do that, especially if, if, if an artist just has a really cool, unique sound, really great production, but maybe they don't quite know how to make it uh, trailer friendly. We'll help them do that for sure. Um, and just for, for anything too, because we you know at Position Music, we don't just do trailers. We also handle media for advertising and for TV, for film, uh, for micro licensing, video games, et cetera. So we, we have a huge, um, we're all about educating our artists on how to get their music sounding perfect for sync, <laughs> I guess. Sometimes we even host little writing camps here at Position or we'll have little, what we call masterclass. Um, we're, we're, we're huge on educating our, our artists and, and helping them out, you know, because we love our, our artists and we, and we love mu music in general. So we want to support our talent and, and, and support the talent that's out there. Like we, we definitely want to nurture everybody. So, uh, that's also why I love working here at Position Music because of that attitude. We just we really deeply care about our 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 artists and composers. So um, yeah, I don't know. I went on a huge <laughs> huge babble about no, that, didn't great. I? I mean, that's such a great culture to have, and you know, real like indie spirit behind it. So it's fantastic. It is, you know, and 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 we we are of the attitude that we want to do a really great job for you, so that you stay with us and work and want to work with us and. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's been really great too. So because we wouldn't want anyone to be unhappy, and 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 that has made a really that's also helped build our our catalog. Is that our composers are happy and they want to write music for us, and they continue to. We keep them motivated with placements and with with constant involvement and education. So fantastic. And um, going to this right. um, bullet point, we discussed this a little bit earlier, and you guys actually have, um, firstly, you're definitely very open to working with new artists, I believe, and mm -hmm. you guys have a, um, a specific email address that people can get yes. to you, so that's um, submissions at position, uh, positionmusic.com. Submissions at positionmusic.com, yes. That'll go to our uh, one of our A&R guys. He'll listen to everything. We all listen to everything. We have three a and r meetings a week of just mm -hmm. listening sessions to listen to new stuff and get everybody's you know read on it so um yeah if you're listening out there and you're a composer or a band or whatever send your stuff to submissions at positionmusic.com we prefer links over attachments 
<laughs> but we'll get into that later. <laughs> we know all about that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Whether you're kind of starting from scratch and building up a catalog of trailer specific music, I mean, what what would be your you know your best practices? Because you guys really nail down on that, and you have you know live orchestra recordings and you do like trailerized cover albums I mean what would you say to somebody who's kind of just dipping their foot in the water so to speak um are you asking for like a single composer or a new company starting a catalog I mean either really I mean let's go with the company starting starting to build up a catalog of specifically trailer music Okay. Uh, so like what, yeah, what, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I know that for like, um, <clears throat> I guess if you're a new catalog and you're wanting to create a trailer music library from scratch right now, um, I mean, I will say that it's a pretty, it's a pretty crowded space out there. There's a lot of new little catalogs popping up all over the place and it's a great time to do it absolutely go for it um i will say that the music departments at the trailer houses always want to find something new so they usually get pretty excited when there's a brand new catalog um that's new to them and they'll listen so mm -hmm. definitely um but for building up like the music itself i mean my best is, advice is to just you know be really educated about movie trailers watch them and see what's in them and listen to them and see how music's used and um you know you can create your music from there and and you obviously want to have a good roster of of composers to be writing the music for you mm -hmm. and uh i don't think you know i don't think all albums have to be live orchestra that i, I mean there's so many amazing sample libraries out there so i I don't think having a live orchestra is required at all. That's just something we like to do. Mm -hmm. um, I admit I'm kind of snooty. <laughs> <laughs> I I like hearing a live orchestra, uh, but I'll be honest, like most most editors and producers at, at trailer companies, they, most of them don't really notice if it's live or not. Some do, you know, some, some people are really music fans and, and they'll get it, but um, I, I think I think they don't really notice. Mm -hmm. I, I just I just like doing it because it's just more genuine for me, I think. And, uh, and I, you know, I appreciate it and I'm a music person. So, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think it's necessary. It, it is really expensive to record a live orchestra. So, you know, um, I, I, yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely ways of working around it if your budget and your facilities aren't huge. Sorry, say that one more time, please. I was just going to say there are there are ways of working around it, you know, if your budget isn't necessarily huge and you don't have yeah. activities. Yeah. yeah. As far as like doing trailerized cover albums, I mean, there's so many out there. I know that the music supervisors are at the point where they're receiving like dozens of a cover of just one song. <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, yes, they do want them. Go for it. But um, try to do your research and maybe look on Spotify and YouTube and see what other covers already exist because there are loads. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice. And then um, start kind of if you get a brief for a bespoke composition, how does that work? I mean, how do you kind of narrow it down and think, oh, this composer is going to be perfect for that? What is the process there? Um, yeah, we, we have a few staff composers and, uh, all of them, um, they kind of vary in style, I guess, because you're right. You, you do want to have the right composer on hand to do stuff and you, you want to have them available. I guess, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble wording this, I guess. <laughs> um, what's the term Jack of all trades versus a master of one thing, I guess. You know, some composers are really, really kind of good at, at a whole bunch of different styles, but they're not necessarily super stellar at one style. Mm -hmm. So, like, that is a question. Do you want your, do you want like five composers on staff and all five of them have their specialties, or do you want one or two composers on staff who can do everything? That's kind of up to you. Um, you know, bespoke compositions vary all over the place and, uh, it just depends on on the quality, I guess, that you're you're looking for. And 
some clients really want high quality on their customs and some people are not too picky about it. They just want it quick. Mm -hmm. So it kind of varies there. Um, as far as us, I mean, we have, we have some staff composers and they definitely have their specialties. They're, they're not jack of all trades types, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also have composers that are not on staff, but who are available. So if I need something that our staff composers can't do, I'll reach out to just one of our other artists and see if they're available. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then they can say yes or no kind of thing. <laughs> Perfect. And um, I know that some of your artists kind of cross collaborate, which is really cool, like across the roster. Yes. How do we... Is that something you actively encourage? Yeah, we try to um, introduce our artists to each other so that they can collaborate. Absolutely. Especially when you have, uh, like for instance, we have a, a composer, James Dooley, his, his, uh, his expertise is orchestral music. He's awesome. And then we also have an artist called Cell Dweller and he's also amazing, but he does uh, electronic music and uh, they're both really stellar. So when you put those two together, you get a really amazing hybrid of electronic orchestral stuff that's perfect for trailers. So amazing. because, uh, because Cell Dweller is not good at orchestral and James Dooley is not good at EDM. So yeah, it's really great to uh, collaborate guys like that. That's, that's, uh, that's definitely fun to do. Awesome. So definitely something else to consider of getting people in your rosters kind of together on that side. Totally, totally. Like a traditional publisher would do, you know, creating co-write opportunities yeah. and stuff. Absolutely. Now, in terms of finding these opportunities, and you know building the relationships because this is such a relationship based um industry firstly with the identifying the opportunities um you know it might be a little bit harder sometimes to find out what a trailer house is working on rather than just like a music supervisor or a production company do you have any kind of tips you mentioned earlier some of the um like their social media profiles and stuff yeah, I'd say social media is the best place to look. Um, mm -hmm. You know, often the uh, trailer houses are not allowed to tell you what they're working on. It's top mm -hmm. secret. We're never allowed to know. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard to know what they're working on. But, um, but yeah, I mean, most of the trailer houses have Twitter pages and Facebook, Instagram. So just follow them and, and kind of uh, see what they're working on. They often like to post, hey, we just did this trailer. Look at this. And you can follow them and, and learn a little bit about at least which clients they have. You know, you'll find that one trailer house is posting a lot of trailers for um, Lionsgate or something. And so you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. so, or perhaps uh, there might be a sequel or a prequel, you know, coming out. Yeah. And if they really nailed it, then they'll probably be hired to do that again. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. But keep in mind that a lot of the trailer houses are working on a lot of the same projects because they're competing as well. So, yeah, that's true. Good point. And where, I mean, is there any particular areas at the moment that you're just really seeing like a ton of opportunities, whether it's, you know, for a certain type of trailer or a certain type of music? Um, at the moment, I'm really seeing opportunity in the streaming services, for mm -hmm. sure. Okay, there's just that for huge folk trailers for like the Spotify's of the world. Um, no, I'm sorry, like, uh, like Netflix and Hulu streaming services. Oh, right. I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing opportunity there. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. And then, you know, so that's going to be across the board, all genres and all kind of different opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't really like to, uh, tell people to try and guess what the client wants musically. There's just no way you can't assume just because it's a, a superhero movie doesn't mean they want superhero music, you know? You never can guess what they're or how they're going to market a film musically. There's there's just no way to guess. And if you try to assume that, you're probably going to offend the, the music supervisor because it's their job to figure that out and work with their client. Your job as a musician or a or a library is to just provide the best music and give them what they ask for. Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't know. I, I could be wrong. Maybe if there's any music supervisors out there listening right now and you disagree with me on this, I apologize. But I feel like it could be really annoying if I am like, oh, I see you're working on Black Panther. Obviously, you want some hip hop for that, you know, because it seems pretty obvious. And yeah, they did use hip hop in the campaign for Black Panther. But what if for the next Black Panther, they don't want to go that route? I don't know. I can't guess that. So mm -hmm. But, you know, other, there's some music supervisors who are the opposite. They would love it if you said, oh, you know what? I think this song would be perfect for this movie. And maybe they do want that. So 
I, I, I know I'm kind of contradicting myself there a little bit, but um, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to annoy my clients with assuming that this is exactly the kind of music that they're going to want for their movie. It's just really hard to predict. Yeah. And I also think that like, you know, given the nature of music supervision, it's become so much more well known that a lot of these people are doing their own interviews and their own webinars and their own panels. So you can kind of yeah. pretend those things, they'll often say what their preference is. So yeah for sure i mean as you start learning and working with more music supervisors you're going to learn how they like to get music everyone's different the music is subjective <laughs> exactly and you know there are so many also there are so many uh services out there agencies third party uh companies that are gonna pitch your music and find opportunities for you if you're kind of a small music company or a composer you know with limited time or resources do you think that that is a good route to go like what would your advice be through that if you're a composer definitely go with a company like us or mm -hmm. or any any of the other libraries or rep companies because yeah i mean it is a full-time job <laughs> i mean it's five full-time jobs trying to pitch music so if you're a composer and you're trying to pitch your music you're not going to have time to compose music <laughs> so just pick one or the other <laughs> well, have someone do it for you and write music sorry what I was just saying that you've already got that relationship established, you know, you've already got the foot through the door. Yeah, if, if you're if you're an artist or a composer and you don't really have those relationships currently, it's going to take you months or years to get those relationships. And there's going to be a lot of daily knocking on the door and making cold calls. And mm -hmm. you're not going to want to do that. You want to write music. So have someone do it for you. Absolutely. Good advice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, some other kind of best practices. As I said earlier, it's such a relationship-based business. You know, get out there, attend conferences. I don't know if there's any events or conferences that you particularly would recommend that, you know, might not be on everybody's list. Um, I don't really know of any conferences per se for trailers. There are conferences all over the place, though, for music industry um, mm -hmm. things and music supervisors will attend and often the music supervisors who work at trailer houses will attend those events. And so I know that there's like um, the Guild of Music Supervisors. Yeah, they have a website and they have events and that's a good one. I would say it's probably more TV film folks, but a lot of trailer people are involved in those as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't but I don't really know of any particular trailer conferences. To be honest, I, I don't think there are any. If there are, and, and I just don't know about them, I apologize. <laughs> um, go, you know, going to the Golden Trailer Awards is obviously a big one, you know, yeah. mingle with some people there. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a terrible answer. I, know, I kind of was just talking about, like, you know, events that probably trailer people would be at that would be a good opportunity. I, I also can't think of any uh, trailer specifics, but... Um, but, you know, there's also, you know, stuff that I know you guys do, which is hosting showcases for these trailer music guys, you know, getting people down to gigs, doing mail outs, you know, all these good things. Yeah, we do all that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And having like a great social presence. You know, did you have like, well, we'll move on to that in a minute. But if something really cool happened, get that up on your Twitter. Or if you've had a great placement, you know, make sure that's there. And again, you know, with your website. Yeah. All these yeah, things. always always be promoting yourself on on social media. Absolutely. Yeah. And hosting parties and showcases for sure. <laughs> um, trailer people have to work long, late hours, unfortunately. Um, so you know, if you can get them out, it's really great. They love they love to get out of work and do stuff usually, but often they can't. They have to. Um, they they work they work terrible hours because <laughs> they oh. they put clients that usually need cuts you know the next morning and they have to stay up till midnight working on it so um, anything you can do to make their lives fun and relaxing in any way inviting them to a fun thing or you know I don't know sending them a massage gift card or something <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> <And pizza. laughs> <You> know. <laughs> there's all kinds of creative things you can do but yeah, um, yeah it's a customer service um, world in a way so you want to you know That's help true. them out how do you make their life easier and better <laughs> precisely now i had to mention this this is you know just a great example of position you know highlighting something cool that happened they got like a shout out from the rock which was was pretty great i don't know if you want to delve into that we, oh my god we loved 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 this <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, our artist Stella Mwangi, she's a, uh, a hip hop artist based in Norway. Um, she's from Kenya though, and she's amazing. Um, she, she does perform sometimes in Europe. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't perform in the US, but her live show is fantastic. And definitely go listen to her music on Spotify or on our website, she's incredible. Um, I did license and place one of her songs in a promo or a trailer for um, the show Ballers, which is on HBO. Mm -hmm. And she happens to have a line in the song about, <laughs> about yeah, no Dwayne, but I rock though. That's what the lyric is. <laughs> and, the, and the editor highlighted that in the trailer and somehow Dwayne Johnson noticed it, <laughs> which was a miracle. And he tweeted about it or put it on his IG. It was, oh, incredible. We loved it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you might not get that every day, but you know, any little win, like get that up there and showcase that because. Hell yes. Hell yes. I'm glad that you found this and put it up because I admit I forgot about it this morning. <laughs> and this is a, this is obviously your Spotify profile as well. And you know, make, just make sure that you're kind of updating these things regularly. Cause I know you guys are always, you know, don't just do the playlist and then like abandon them. Just, you know, keep that stuff going, keep it fresh. Yeah, music supervisors always love finding music on Spotify. A lot of them do. Some mm -hmm. of them go straight straight to Spotify and don't even come to me. So absolutely keep your Spotify playlist up to date and happening. Yeah, awesome. Okay, now I'm going to move on to pitching now. Um, I feel like these are all kind of quite uh, generic tips for general pitching, like not necessarily too specific to trailers, but, you know, I think it's still very relevant. Um, you know, sure. doing your research to understanding, you know, what you can offer, you know, don't, don't try and be a jack of all trades unless you really are a jack of all trades. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all these things, you know, multiple versions, I'm guessing stems and stuff like that is especially useful for the trader world. Yeah. Um, should, I see we're running out of time. Should I just bang through these real quick? These yeah, yeah. Go for it. Um, yeah, do your research, definitely watch trailers, uh, follow all the, uh, the trailer houses online, you know, on their Twitter accounts and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also like traileraddict.com, I think. Okay. Understand where your value lies. Yep, definitely that. Don't try to be a jack of all trades. Find your, what you're really passionate about and what you're genuine about and that's what you do because it, it's, if you try to fake your way through it, it's going to be obvious. You want to be doing writing the music that makes you most happy. That's what's going to be the most compelling. Mm -hmm. um, personable and relevant. Um, yes, definitely. Um, I, I totally agree with everything you wrote there. <laughs> okay. um, keep it short and sweet. Yeah, one, one track. If you're, if you're pitching, pitching music to a music supervisor or a trailer house, keep in mind that they are getting pitched hundreds of songs hundreds of emails that is mm -hmm. on a daily basis, probably more than that. I mean, they're getting so inundated with, with uh, submissions from libraries, from publishers, from labels, from composers, artists. I mean, how do you get through that noise? I mean, I admit I, it's a challenge even for me and I have the relationship in place. So mm -hmm. just, yeah, make, make your subject line as, as enticing as possible. Yeah. <laughs> use, use a lot of keywords that, that a music supervisor would want to hear, you mm -hmm. know? Um, if you're following them on Twitter and you see they're doing a lot of action movies, you know, okay, here's a great action track for this, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I know that kind of contradicts what I said earlier about um, kind of assuming what they need, but you know, sometimes you have to kind of put a loud keyword to kind of help them out. So mm -hmm. uh, stems and multiple versions. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, editors, they love stems. We don't give stems out uh, automatically, but if they ask them for me, uh, I definitely give them to it, but some libraries uh, make the stems available right for them right away. So that's up to you. But yeah, they, they love the old stems. Mm -hmm. uh, don't attach MP3s. Correct. Always a download link. Label everything. Yeah. If your metadata is not on point, you're screwed later. And sometimes <laughs> music supervisors won't even ever use you again if your metadata is not right. So get that right. And wave files don't hold metadata, so use AIFFs, please, mm -hmm. everybody, always, always AIFFs. Um, be flexible. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you don't have to be required to do that. I, I don't think you need to, but you know, yeah, you, you 
do whatever you think is, is best, I guess, on that. Mm -hmm. Ensure that your music is of the required quality. Always. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, so yeah, just good, just good general stuff to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Awesome. Um, and do also, we have time to take any questions, or are we? Um... Yeah. I mean, do you want to run quickly through um, just some of the popular stuff because that was stuff that I got quite a lot of questions about in advance of trends that you're sure. at the moment um, and things like that. So maybe we run through this and then. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to take a little look through the questions now because a lot okay. of people are like how can I get in touch with you so we've kind of covered those bases um okay yeah for the people who want to get in touch with me uh or if you want to get in touch with me personally about something it's emily at positionmusic.com but if you're submitting your music please send it to submissions at positionmusic.com yeah. because I don't um, I don't, I don't actually have time to listen to everything, but our A&R department will listen to everything and then they'll bring to me what they like, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. They, they kind of filter it for me. So, yeah. um, okay. Cover recordings. Yeah. You guys have noticed lots of cover songs and trailers and, um, is that trend going away soon? The answer is no. <laughs> Whoop. I lost the page there. Sorry. Um, Cover recordings are still going very strong. I mean, here here in the industry, I think we're all a little tired of them, but the fans are not, so they will continue. Uh, trailerizing of popular songs, same answer. Remixes, you know, we don't really get involved in remixes so much uh, at our company, but yeah, they're, they're a huge thing for sure. But you know, remixes are challenging because uh, you gotta do, um, it's it's up to you if you want to do a buyout fee or or if you want to give up ownership because you you obviously aren't going to own a remix and you will own a cover song so or you'll own the master recording that is so that's up to you sound design uh yeah i mean there's so much sound design out there it's crazy there's much more out there available to people than there was before so um if you're going to in, in if you're going to make sound design it better be really freaking good <laughs> make it pop um i'd say like it's even more popular now to just record sound design rather than using sound library samples um score from other films and tv shows and trailers i haven't noticed that as a trend but i mean it happens of course mm -hmm. overlays and customizations huge trend still continuing and definitely increasing absolutely mm -hmm. um emerging trends um, I'm noticing that uh, the biggest trend I'm noticing is that uh, I guess the requests I'm getting lately is that uh, the music needs to be not quite as big because um, you know for years it's always been like big huge drums big back end huge huge bigger 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 and now it's, it's dialing back a little more it's like well, maybe not so big let's let's make it a little more subdued that's kind of my what I've noticed lately but you know it's it's everyone's a little different so yeah um different trends in different territories um yeah i think there are different trends in different territories but um i deal with more of the u.s clients so mm -hmm. um i don't i would say like i guess you could probably tell me better than <laughs> emma because you're in the uk but i think the uk music for trailers tends to be a little like a little classier actually like they don't really like the big bombastic um, American movie trailer music. I noticed, at least for my clients in London, they tend to like stuff a little more, a, a little more subdued. I guess a little more classy. <laughs> you Brits, yeah. you Brits are classy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> cases, I think again, it's you know, it's very case by case. But um, yeah. yeah. And I apologize. I I don't know the answer on the VR thing. Um, no, don't worry. I'm, yeah, I'm not well educated enough on that one. I was just wondering if you guys had like, you know, done any work on VR trailers or whatever, but maybe that's something you guys haven't delved into just yet. I don't think we have, or maybe it was in a trailer, in a VR trailer and I just didn't know it. I okay. like we may have cl cool. cleared for it all media and then it ended up there. <laughs> I'll ask you that yeah. in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, amazing. Now I just, <laughs> I just put this up because, you know, it's kind of a new era of position. You guys have got a great new website that's going to launch soon. So I just thought I'd let you shout out anything about that <laughs> recent thing. Thank you. Anything you want to shout about right now? Well, yeah, our, our new website is going to go live, I think, in a few weeks. So um, it looks fantastic. Uh, you can see in the background there's a picture of a crowd 
that would be one of the big music festivals in Europe. And the guy on stage there in the forefront is is Sam Getz. He is the lead singer and guitar player for the band Welshly Arms. Mm -hmm. And if you have not heard of Welshly Arms, immediately go to Spotify and look them up and listen because they're fantastic. And um, they are really, really good. They're on tour right now also. They're actually, Emma, playing in London on November 15th, and I am going to London to be there. So oh, wow. there you go. <laughs> I'll drop you an email. That's three days after my birthday. So I will. Uh, okay, perfect. <laughs> and for those of you in London, uh, go to the show. And for those of you listening who are in Los Angeles, Welshly Arms is playing at the Troubadour on October 23rd, which is uh, in like a week or two. Um, and Welsh Arms is, is definitely one of our, our big artists and I have placed many of their songs in trailers. So yeah. you have definitely heard their stuff in trailers before. Okay, awesome. So yeah, so look out for the new position site. Um, I don't know if you have any time to do questions or? Uh, I can do five minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm gonna skip through some of them because I feel like we've gone over some of them. Um, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. Sagan says, as an electronic producer, do I submit beats or songs I've recorded with artists? Um, both, I guess. But uh, I, I'd say if you're if you're pitching to us, we're probably more interested in the stuff with your artists. Okay, cool. Um, we have a look. Someone's asking about the writing camps. Is that just for your writers, or do you, are you open to like outside? Just for our writers. Okay, cool. Um, a lot of like, what's the best way to submit? So we've gone through that. Uh, Submissions at positionmusic.com. Perfect. Um, okay, someone, again, these are all names I can't pronounce. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm so sorry, it's probably completely wrong. Um, they say, I see that in the UK, the price for a song in the trailer is 9,500. It's very precise. Can one say it is generally higher in the USA? And how do you price a short use like for four seconds? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, the UK is a whole different ball game as far as licensing than the US because of the MCPS rate card. So that rate he's referring to, the 9,000 pound, that's actually a blanket rate for per trailer. So if a, if a trailer house is cutting a trailer in the UK and it's going to be for all media for UK and Ireland only, he, he or she can use as many pieces of music in that trailer for that $9,000 blanket. It covers all of it. And then MCPS divvies up the money among the libraries being used in that uh, campaign. So that's the UK only. In the US, it does not work like that at all. It is a per use license. If you're licensing something that's only four seconds long, um, I can't advise you on what to quote on that because I don't know if your cue is a commercial artist cue. I don't know if it's a sound design cue. I, you know, I also don't know what the media rights are. You should also consider what which film it's for, which studio is it? Is it a little indie studio or is it a huge movie studio like Disney or Warner Brothers? So mm -hmm. I can't advise you on that. But yes, you can quote directly. If if it's in the UK though, it does, and your song is registered in MCPS, it goes through MCPS. Okay. If your song is not registered in MCPS, then you can do it direct. Okay. And then in terms of like the four second ones, how does that work? Uh, in, in the UK, it's, yeah, it just depends on if that song is registered in MCPS or not. Okay. Um, and then um, they've also asked, do you price sound design elements like risers the same way as you price full, full trailer cues? No, we don't. Okay. Um, just scanning through. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's that's pretty much covered all the questions. So um, okay, great. Thanks for your questions, everybody. Yeah, I put together some resources here so everybody can check those out. There's gonna they're all hyperlinked and everyone's gonna get the presentation. So that will go to everyone um in the next day or two. And again, these are ways that you can find Think Tank online and our blog and our socials and please do get in touch um, if you want to hear more about Think Tank and you know, of course get in touch with Position if you want to send in your stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah I think that's pretty much it. I just want to say such a huge thanks to you Emily because you've been such a great guest and it's been you know so interesting. Thank you so much for having me and for all of you listening I really appreciate you. Um, 
registering and, and listening. And I think my parents are listening. So hi, mom and dad, because <laughs> they never know what I do for work. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I want to remind everybody to visit our website, positionmusic.com, and be sure to follow us on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that stuff, because we're constantly posting all of, our, of the exciting things that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. and um and go to our spotify page etc cetera, etc cetera. <laughs> um thank you so much emma and thanks everyone yeah thank you everyone for joining as well um i'm gonna wind things down now so everybody have a good evening or day wherever you are but um <laughs> yeah thanks again right. thanks i'll text you later emma <laughs> <laughs> bye bye